Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick video detailing the electrical components of our tiny house here, the $3,000 tiny house. Now that I got it wired up, I wanted to show you what I did to bring power to the tiny house. And the first thing that I did is I went on Amazon and I ordered this inlet right here that is typically, if I'm not mistaken, used for uh, marine applications. So it's typically in, be installed on something like a sailboat. But I'm gonna put the product description and the link to it on Amazon down in the description below. And this is a 30 amp to three prong inlet and it allows you to close the cover down. We just got some rain here, so. And then the next thing I had to do was I had to go on Amazon and purchase this adapter. What it does, this enables me to hook up to a normal 110 outlet so I wanted the ability to have 30 amps in the tiny house, but I don't have a 30 amp hookup right here on my house. So I just bought this adapter and I'm gonna put the description or the link to it on Amazon down in the description below. But what this does, it's uh, snap on, it's twist on. So you connect like this and then you just snap it in place. And you kind of give it a twist and it actually has this locking ring that you twist clockwise and uh, it locks it in place for you. Hard to do with one hand though. But let me take you on inside and show you my wiring setup inside the $3,000 tiny house. So let me take you on inside and show you. For those of you who haven't watched the prior video, part one of me building this tiny house, I'm in the middle of it right now and I'm doing it for $3,000 or less. And right now I'm about half of that. So you can watch the video, I'll put the link in the description below. You can watch the first part of the video. Well, what I've got here, so this is the inside, and I've pulled this cover up so you guys can see it. What I've got here is this is the inlet coming in, and you can see these are the backs of the screws. It comes in, and I've got, I believe this is a number eight, if I'm not mistaken, eight gauge wire coming in. Um, and it runs into my box here, and I've got, I wanna take you through step by step. This is like a tension reducer. What it does is it keeps the wire from actually rubbing up against the metal box and accidentally kind of splicing it and causing a short. So it's important to have that. And you come into the box. Now let's talk about what my box is. My box is the Siemens 60 amp. Um, let me show you here on this. The Siemens 60 amp. Um, it is an indoor load center but you can find these at, at Lowe's, and uh, mine was pretty inexpensive. You have room for two breakers in there, and I put two 15 amp breakers right here and right here. And um, so, as you can see, I've got, let me readjust my light. You see I have my neutral wire coming in, my, my 8.3 wire coming in. This is the neutral, and it runs up here, and it's gonna run into my bus bar right there. And then I've got my hot wire coming in, and it's going to plug in right there, okay? But um, I'm keeping this at 30 amps and not 60 amps. But in order for both of these breakers to have power to them, you have to run a jumper cable that runs across and heats up this bar over here on this side and gives us power to this breaker. Okay, so let me review real fast. And the reason I'm making this video is because I saw a lot of videos on YouTube that kind of beat around the bush and don't give me a good step-by-step -step example of how to wire up a tiny house. So I kind of had to just learn from scratch. And uh, so again, I've got my inlet. I've got my 8-3 wi wire excuse me, coming in. I've got my neutral that goes up, and it hits that bus bar right there. And then I've got my hot wire coming in and it goes around and it hits right there at that terminal. And then I've got a jumper line jumping over and it's hitting that terminal as well. And what it does is it actually plugs electricity into both of these terminals, therefore giving electricity to both of these breakers. So then I can branch out from there. Now my ground wire goes to the same bus bar that the neutral does. So you see this bare ground wire right here that comes in, the bare copper, it goes up and it hits that bus bar. And all of my ground wires will be doing that. All the ground wires that come into this box will be doing that, okay? So let's talk about where the power goes. 
So I've got two 15 amp breakers. The first branch of breakers, it comes out and it's gonna go around here and I'm gonna run it through and it hits my first outlet right here by the door. Then I've got two switches and uh, I'm heating up these two switches. One switch is gonna control an interior light here in the main living area. The other switch is gonna control and uh, switch on and off my motion sensor or my porch light. It's not gonna be a motion sensor actually. It's gonna be a porch light and that's right outside on the porch, okay? My power is gonna continue. So notice you have, I have three. I've got switch and power going up to my two lights here. And then I've got back here, this is gonna be my power that runs up and around and comes down here and hits that outlet. Okay, then it's gonna come down and it's gonna hit that outlet. Then it's gonna come down and heat up that outlet right there. So in this one 15 amp break, uh, branch, I've got one, two, three, and then four outlets, four outlets and two lights, okay? So my intention is to put a small suitcase AC unit right here in the space. And so this outlet will be designated for that AC unit. That's gonna draw, that's gonna draw the most amperage of just about anything in this place, all right? This is for cell phones uh, to be charged next to the bed here and for like a tablet and stuff like that, okay? Or a laptop if you wanna charge that, or a little, little light. So not drawing a lot of current. This is for a TV, also not gonna draw a huge amount of current. TV slash DVD player, whatever the case may be. All right, so let's talk about my, my next branch. Um, I've got this other 15 amp break, breaker right here. Now, uh, like it's, it's coming off of, you can see down what you do is, uh, you can watch a YouTube video on this, but what you do is you take the hot um, lead of your wires that you're running, your Romex wires, and you're gonna, you're gonna plug them in right there. Let me see if I can get my finger. Right there at the bottom of those, those breakers, that's the hot lead that's coming out at the bottom of your breaker. Meanwhile, the neutrals are all getting stuffed in this bus bar right here, okay? So anyways, let's follow this branch up. This branch is gonna come up here. It's gonna cross over to that outlet. Then it's gonna come down, hit this outlet right here. This is gonna be where my kitchenette is. And the kitchenette is gonna have a little dorm room fridge. So that outlet is gonna power the dorm room fridge. And then also that outlet coming out of the bottom of it is the outdoor outlet. And that's a GFI outlet out there. GFI means ground fault uh, protected. So if it ever it, um, senses any moisture or anything like that, it's gonna short itself out and stop sending power to it. It's kind of a safety mechanism. And you want a GFI, GFCI outlet on all outdoor outlets. So this comes up, comes off of this, and it's gonna run through here, run the window, and it's gonna hit this outlet right here. This is gonna get changed into a GFI outlet um, because of its proximity to the kitchen sink. It's really important. I, I'm yet to change that out, so don't yell at me yet. Okay, so it comes down, it's gonna go through, go through this wall. And let me back up a little bit and show you what this wall is all about. This is the bathroom wall, okay? And there's gonna be a rolling barn door right here that's gonna roll open and closed. And then there's gonna be a ceiling on top that's gonna to sit on top of this loft. And that ceiling on top is gonna to be, um, serve as a ceiling for the bathroom and keep it more private, but also allow me to have about a foot and a half of storage space up there, if you can see that. And if you're brave, maybe even a bed. So let's follow this outlet back in. It comes in through here. It's gonna cross over and down. See how I kind of do some creative work there with the, the stud. Comes down, it hits this outlet. This is a GFI outlet as well. I just need to run to Lowe's and get a second GFI outlet for the one by the kitchen. This is a GFI outlet because this is the bathroom and the bathroom is gonna always have water in it. And you always want a GFI outlet where there's water, okay? And I think it, the code maybe is something like three feet within the source of water. It needs to be GFI. And that's a code, that's a residential code. However, this is a tiny house, so there are no codes for tiny houses on wheels because there's no, there's no inspect, inspecting body 
in the local city or county or state government that really dictates how you're supposed to wire these things up. So let's keep following up and then I'll talk about that again here in a second. So we come off this GFI outlet and it brings power up to this switch. This switch controls the power to and from the light in the bathroom. So I'll kill the switch and the light goes off. This is just a very temporary light fixture that I had sitting around in my garage. It might not stay. It might though. So that's it. Now guys, don't get on YouTube and don't blow up my comments saying that I'm wiring this all completely wrong. I'm a school teacher by trade. I worked for an electrician for two months when I was in college and it's been 15 years now or more. So I probably am going to make some errors. The wonderful thing about these tiny houses is there really isn't an inspection process. Now I'm doing everything as safely as possible and I'm just using common sense. But if you see something in this video that is like blatantly dangerous or anything like that, then yeah, comment, please. You know, obviously I wanna know your comments, I wanna know your feedback. But don't say code this and code that, okay? Because really codes are kind of out the window when it comes to a tiny house on wheels. I don't have to follow codes. And that's a wonderful thing. Now, as the tiny house movement continues to grow and continues to gain traction, you may see some places, and there may already be some places, where there is an inspecting body, a legal entity that has rules on the book that say if you have a tiny house, you have to wire it up to residential specs. But where I'm at, that is totally not the case. So I'm not worried about codes, guys. But if you see something that's blatantly dangerous, um, you know, let me know about it. When I leave for work every morning and I come back in the evenings to work on this thing, I unplug the shore power. So my kids, when they come in here, if they come in here, because it's kind of hard because I lock that door, but if they come in here, all of this has zero power, okay? So I, I'm really safe when it comes to that. All right, guys. Well, I hope this video has been enlightening for you. If you want me to do any other videos about this uh, tiny house, or answer any questions you have about the electrical components of this tiny house, then um, just comment down below. But the next phase in the next video of this tiny house build will be the plumbing, all right? So what I'm gonna be doing is installing a toilet here and then installing a shower base there and a shower nozzle there. So that'll be the next video. But until then, thanks guys for watching. If this earned your like, please like down below, hit the little thumbs up thing, subscribe if you wanna follow the progress of this video and look for the products that I've purchased to wire this place up down in the description below. All right, guys, keep it real. Until next time, bye.